Chesh Vitame Nakanale. My name is Rob and I am currently down under in Australia and this is proof that Poles get everywhere because I'm in Brisbane at the Polish club, Polonia. And in here, there is a Polish market that happens once a month where Australian Poles and other visitors can come in and get those treats that they are loving and used to from Poland and don't get to experience very often anymore. So let's go in and see what they've got to offer. Well, as soon as I walk in, it smells like Poland, which is a great sign. So there's lots of different stalls around here doing different things that you would think are Polish. So for example, behind there, that is a big queue for. There is meats and cheese. That is a staple of a Polish shop, right? Uh, some different Polish merchandise there. The best bit, the best bit, lots of Polish sweets, such as obviously Varvel sweets. And they're actually my favorite. If you don't, look, these are amazing. Uh, so they're bringing, they are basically bringing Poland to Aussies and well, Polish Aussies, I suppose, but they've got everything that you would find in a normal Polish shop. Yeah, we've all seen packets like this, right? But this is awesome, this is awesome. Different books, it's different books here. I don't know if I'd be able to, I'd be able to read it, I wouldn't be able to understand it though. Uh, they've obviously got Ponsky, lots of Ponsky over here. I'm gonna have some, just so you know. I will have some and I will try it and see if they are authentic to what I've had when I've been in Poland. If you've been watching my channel and my vlogs, you will know I am not a fan of sauerkraut. So here you can see the strong connection between Poles and Aussies and over here, that is 100% pole. It switches between Australian, but they got a YouTube channel, uh, Outback Polax, and they are here at the market. They're selling, what are they selling? Tea towels, napkins, hang on, let's keep going, hats. Bringing Poland to Australia. Lots of food, lots of food. I do not like sauerkraut. Do you like sauerkraut? I love sauerkraut. What is your name? Because your tops, Pavel. Pavel. Uh, your top says, I am Polish, you can't pronounce my last name, so I'm going to try. <laughs> I want to know your last name now, and I'm going to see if I can pronounce it. Let me see. Okay. Let's, I'm going to show you first. If it all, there you go. It's definitely the wrong way around. So, Pavel, I love how you put Pavel. I love how Pavel. you... Pavel. <laughs> that's, that's, no, because that L hasn't got a line in it. That has not got the line in it, just a heads up. Pavel. Okay. Uh, Kravchinski. Give me that one. Get out of here. Well, that was easy. Was that meant to be difficult? That's because you're in England. Most of us are over there. Kravchinski. That's yes, because I'm learning Polish. Uh, <laughs> how long have you? Um, how long have you been living here? Uh, actually, this year in September. September 13th, I believe, 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. But you still feel a strong connection to your uh, Polish roots? I'm born, bred and lean Polish, 100%, and I'll be back. I go back every year if I can. Okay. Um, where are you from in Poland? Malbork. Where so from? I'm a little village of Malbork, where they not far from Gdańsk, an hour from yeah. Gdańsk. Yeah, an hour from Gdańsk, okay. Yeah. And then, um, so I... I'm going to take still this have, off. We still, have a lot of, um, we still have a lot of family there, we have a farm there. Um, Why did you move to Australia? It wasn't my choice. No. <laughs> That's never the way, is it, for youngsters? Uh, look, um, after the wolf war, um, the wall fell down. Dad was coming out here, we've got some family out here, dad was coming out and, um, you know, working and doing stuff and he said, one day he just went, when I was 10 years old, and he said, what do you reckon, should we move? And me and my sister looked at each other and went, I've never been on a plane, might as well give it a try. And That's an experience going so, on all that we experienced last year. I'll tell you what, I didn't like it at first, and uh, to this day there are, there are certain things I don't, I don't like about Australia. It's a very big nanny state. That's fair, um, I think that's fair. Australia, yeah. uh, sorry, Poland is known for being hard. The Babchers, they will sort you out, right? The surveillance, oh, the surveillance yeah. system. Yeah. I've still got PTSD <laughs> <laughs> from Babcha, from Russia. Um, 
but yeah, so yeah, no, look, 30 years. Um, I am planning to retire in Poland though, so yeah, there you go. Good. people do go back. Yeah. I, I've looked at I've looked at different people like Chopin and people like that, and they often don't go back to Poland. But you are the exception. No, I will go back. I will go there back. There you go. I'm going to keep looking. I'll, Thank I'll you so much. Back on the farm. Um, it's awesome that you are proper Polish in Australia. I'm so glad you can pronounce my surname. There you go. It's very impressive. Very good impressive. Good And I have found this awesome stall, the Art of Krupinski. Now, this is made in Australia by a Polish family. It is doing very, very well. I'm going to give it a little taste. I'm not, if I really like this, I don't really like wine, but if I like this, I'm going to be really angry with myself because I don't like wine. But let's see how good it is. Oh, it does smell good. It does smell, oh. Maybe this will make me like wine. <laughs> If I'm going to make you like wine, I'll take full responsibility for it. Oh. Okay. Was that this bottle? Yes. Okay. So I've just tried the Brave Princess Rosé. It's a dry. It is very dry, but surprisingly juicy at the same time. It's a weird... It's quite strange. You're getting all the you're getting all the flavours as well as the dry. Okay, I would drink that if it had a bit of lemonade in. Is that sacrilege? It is. That might be sacrilege. I'm so sorry. It is sacrilege, but in the end, wine is only a drink. Exactly. You drink it the way you like. Yeah, we drink it to get drunk. No. In England, we do. Oh well, yes. Um, very, very good, and I love the. Hang on. The I'm going to get my face out of it. You've obviously got Wojtek, uh, the bear, who served, and you've got Hussar as well. The theme is very Polish. I don't mind it, that's an annoying thing. I don't, I'm not a wine drinker. And that was pretty good. Would you like to try the other one? Oh, well? do I want to try? Okay, I'll try the other one. The sparkling Shiraz. A sparkling Shiraz. So it is something of an Australian specialty. Smells all right. Smells good. So this is sparkling Shiraz. And this is quite good. And you can't tell me that oh, you don't like it. I do like that. That's actually drink. That's good. Because there's nothing to dislike about it. That's good. Uh, two Kronsky, please. Two Kronsky with everything. Uh, oh, do you want sauerkraut? No, just no, no, no sauerkraut. Well, that's not everything. No. So I have to end with eating a Kronsky and a Ponsky and I can't remember what that's called, but it is also delicious. So, right, let's give it a quick try. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's hot. It smells incredible. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. That is literally Poland in a nutshell. If you eat that, the smell, the taste is just Poland. That was absolutely delicious, that Kronsky. Uh, now, this one has rosé jam in. I don't know if I've ever had rosé jam. Let's see if it really takes me back to Poland. Hang on. It does. That jam, that jam is Poland. That is, that's the easiest way I can say. That is mm, floral, quite sharp, just like they do in Poland. Now the, this one, I've definitely seen these. Now, they are a bit smaller than you'd get, for example, when I was in Wrocław. They are a bit smaller. This one, it's got icing, uh, like a raspberry jam, maybe, and then like a crumble. Let's give this a try. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. How cool is it to have something like this for Poles in Australia, or Brisbane to be specific? It just shows that Poles really are everywhere. Uh, you know, Brits are everywhere, but Poles take it to another level. But it is really cool that there's a lot of things going on here that are allowing Poles to learn the language again. Uh, because obviously, second, third, fourth generation Poles, you know, they need the lessons to keep the traditions alive. This is a great place to come if you are in Brisbane. It is once a month. Come. Thank you so much for watching. Please do make sure you like and subscribe. Aussies and Poles unite. I'll catch you next time.